And so we think it's really what, what, what matters I and mean, where you want to use this is evaluative situations, like social threat situations. Where are you being evaluated, either by your friends, like for teenagers at the lunchroom table. It could be, you know, for some people, it's speaking at a school board meeting. It might be giving a pitch or giving a talk like this or um, doing a job interview. We decided that the one that most people could relate to because most people had been through was the job interview. So um, we published these, these findings, and the media are all over it, and they say, um, OK, so this is what you do when you go in for the job interview, right? <laughs> you know, so we were, of course, horrified and uh, said, oh my god, no, 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 that's not what we meant at all for a num numerous reasons. No, 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 don't do that. Again, this is not about you talking to other people. It's you talking to yourself. What do you do before you go into a job interview? You do this. Right? You're sitting down, you're looking at your iPhone or your Android, not trying to leave anyone out. Um, you are, you know, you're looking at your notes, you're hunching up, making yourself small, when really what you should be doing maybe is this, like in the bathroom, right? <laughs> Do that, find two minutes. So that's what we want to test, okay? So we bring people into a lab, and they do, a couple, they do either high or low power poses again. They go through a very stressful job interview. It's five minutes long. They are being recorded, they're being judged also, and the judges are trained to give no nonverbal feedback. So they look like this. Like, imagine this is the person interviewing you. So for five minutes, nothing. And this is worse than being heckled. People hate this. It's, it's what Marianne LaFrance calls standing in social quicksand. So this really spikes your cortisol. So this is the job interview we put them through, because we really wanted to see what happened. We then have these coders look at these tapes, four of them. They're blind to the hypothesis, they're blind to the conditions, they have no idea who's been posing in what pose. And they, they, they end up looking at these sets of tapes and they say, oh, we want to hire these people, all the high power posers, we don't want to hire these people. We also evaluate these people much more positively overall. But what's driving it? It's not about the content of the speech. It's about the presence that they're bringing to the speech. We also, because we rate them on all these variables related to sort of competence, like how well structured is the speech? How good is it? What are their qualifications? No effect on those things. This is what's affected, these kinds of things. People are bringing their true selves, basically. They're bringing themselves. They bring their ideas, but as themselves, like with no you know, residue over them. So this is what's driving the effect or media mediating the effect. So um, when I tell people about this, that our bodies change our minds and our minds can change our behavior and our behavior can change our outcomes, they say to me, I don't, it feels fake, right? So I said fake it till you make it. Like I don't, it's not me. Like I don't want to get there and then still feel like a fraud. I don't want to feel like an imposter. I don't want to get there only to feel like I'm not supposed to be here. And that really resonated with me because I want to tell you a little story about being an imposter and feeling like I'm not supposed to be here. 